Now imagine you as a researcher, you invent something groundbreaking, something so pivotal to society. And in order to share it to the world, you have to pay a middleman. And then that middleman goes and finds experts to verify your work and then don't get paid anything. Do you know what this is? Academic publishing. And I kid you not, it is a billion dollar scam. It has to stop. Some things need to be changed, but I want to share with you why it is so in case you are not aware, whether you've started out in research, whether you're even a postdoc. There's things you need to do about academic journals that will make you think twice about the entire scheme and infrastructure. Before I get too annoyed and get really aggravated, let me just give some context as to what academic journals actually are. At the heart of any academic discourse are academic journals. Think of them as gatekeepers of the scholarly world. You'll find research articles, reviews and other types of scholarly work that make up an academic journal. Now imagine this, there's a simplistic kind of understanding of what an academic journal is. When I go through that, you'll be baffled to figure out why is this actually such a dangerous scheme. So an academic journal, plain and simply, is a researcher conducts studies, they write about it, they put it together in findings and they submit it to a journal. The journal goes through this rigorous peer review process, finds experts in the field who can verify your findings, and then it gets submitted into the world. So on paper, it sounds fairly straightforward. And this is a model that's been there for centuries. You know, you can find papers in black and white and on the typewriter. Again, going on this very similar model of this academic process and this peer review process. But then you might be wondering, what's all the fuss about? Isn't that what you're supposed to do as a researcher? When you now realise it and look through it from a researcher's point of view, I want to break down many different angles here. You realise it is broken, it is a fallacy, it is a joke to be fair. I'll even use that it is a joke, that it is sometimes even considered an insult to a researcher, that this model still exists because it needs to change. And here's why. So for those who are in the research world, you might be very familiar with the term APC, Article Processing Charge. I'll give you an idea. You might have got an externally funded grant to fund the research that you did. You spent many months, many years getting together all the research, publishing the findings together, getting the findings ready. Then you have to pay again to share it to the world. And this article processing charge, for those who might not be familiar, is the, a payment, unfortunately, that you pay to a journal for them to go from your Word document to a PDF that people can download. Now, there are, yes, typesetting and other formatting features. But sometimes within the UK, you have to pay two and a half grand, sometimes three thousand pounds, which is probably around three thousand dollars now, for your article to be processed. Yes, there should be some element of cost involved, but not three thousand pounds on top of the money that you spent, sometimes even from your own pocket, to do the research. Now I'm here sitting, I was I did my PhD, I did a few postdocs, and throughout this whole time I was thinking, I didn't get much money to do the research. And then somehow I managed to put together a paper. I didn't have to pay for it to be shown to the world. Which is a fallacy, it doesn't make sense. One of the biggest reasons academia exists and research exists is to benefit society, to contribute to new findings so we can advance society in many different ways from logistics to understanding different elements from the history point of view to advancing AI and tech to improving new drugs and formulations. All of these things come from academic papers being submitted, other people finding these findings and then building upon it. But you have to pay every time you find something of value. It defeats the purpose. It should be like you should get paid to actually give this work up. That's one major problem. Let's talk about the other. This one really pisses me off. Sorry for my language, but this really annoys me. And it's annoying me for the past seven, eight years. And it's a notion of the free labour part of when you publish an article. Now, for those who might not publish something yet, when you go towards a journal, you might select some reviewers. You see many memes and jokes about review two and stuff like this. But from behind the scenes, these reviewers get called, they get emailed from this journal to say, so and so and so is looking to publish this paper. Can you verify its findings? Can you go through and give us some feedback? So these reviewers, which are sometimes PhD students, postdocs, PIs and professors, go take time out of their day, go review this paper, read it inside out, tear it apart in good way and bad way, and then submit their findings. But they do not get paid anything. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. There's no recognition, there's no monetary benefit at all. So an academic journal gets sent a paper to them, they then charge that person for us to process it. They send that PDF to reviewers, they don't pay them, they want to do all the work, all the verification, make it sure that it's scientifically valid, 
which is a skill needed. You need credible experts to do that. They don't get paid nothing. They get sent back all the feedback. They send it to these lot and it gets published or not. They lose out. They lose out. Academic Journal gets loads of money. How does that work? So arguably the most skilled part of this entire process, the one where you need, you know, very skilled expertise, are the people who don't get paid. And the people who actually do the repetitive work, the admin work, the processing work, get paid all the money. That makes sense, doesn't it? Now number three is from a university or an institute point of view, which is the notion of, let's say you publish your findings to a journal, it gets through all of this stupid process and gets out. Other people who are within that university alone who want to you know, potentially read this paper, they got to pay quite a lot of money in order to have access to that journal, right? And what a lot of people don't really realise is that universities pay a stupid amount of fees in order to access these journals. So then people who are there, they're going on to Google Scholar and then they download the PDF because they have access to it. Don't realise there's thousands of hundreds of thousands of pounds that go behind the scenes every year in order for you to have access to these journals so you can download it. And this is where it gets even more annoying than it already has. So you're the researcher, you have paid to get this research out there to this journal, and then there's another researcher who's in your field. They have to sometimes pay to get access to it. And it might not be through them directly, but the university has had to pay access to get through it. It might not come out of their own pocket, but in terms of a model and principle, you pay to get it out there, and they'd have to pay to get it onto their desktop so they can read. How does this make sense? Like, seriously, this have a, this thing, imagine you're a researcher. You just work so hard to get the findings. You then have to pay. And in order for your research colleagues in around the world to get access to your work, they then have to potentially pay through themselves, through their grant, through the university, in order to get access. And then we're sitting here wondering why so much money goes down the drain within research and not actual money is funded for the more important ones. And the fourth point is from a holistic point of view. And what I mean by this is that researchers from every point lose out. Now I'm going to break it down to you. What I mean by this is that if you're the researcher who's publishing the work, you put all that effort into publishing, getting the data, then you have to pay to get it out there. So you've lost out. The reviewer, so let's say that researcher A is the one who's doing the research. Researcher B is the one who's reviewing the research. They don't get any monetary benefit. They don't get any recognition on your CV that I'm a reviewer, it is of no value. So the academic journals are essentially exploiting these reviewers from around the world to do their grunt work, to do the highly skilled work. They lose out. So researcher A lose out, researcher B lose out. Researcher C is a person who's potentially looking at the paper. Sometimes it's not for free. So they might have to request to get access, they might have to pay to get access, they might have to contact their library within the university to pay to have access to the journal. They lose out. But this is all for researchers. So how is it researcher A, B and C lose out completely? There's no potential, yes, in order for you to advance your research career, you have to publish papers. But it, you're at a net negative in terms of financial implications. So you need even more funding just to get the papers out there. Researcher B doesn't get anything for it. So imagine you're doing your own research, you're, you're you know, teaching, you're looking after students, and you have to carve out time your way to really advance the cause but you get nothing in return. And researcher C is sitting there like, oh, that's a really important paper. Hmm, I can't access it. Fine, I need to go pay for it. It doesn't make sense, does it? So then how do we solve all this? How do we actually try and change academic journal culture? I've got some ideas, so I just want to share them to you. One very interesting way is to have institution-owned journals, where you essentially remove the middleman, where the university themselves host and organize and manage the journal. So you don't have to have this middle person to pay to. It can go within the university. Some researchers themselves can be part of that processing of the journal, where a different department can be focused on actually getting that journal out. And there could be some recuperation to back to the researcher, where you know there are some portion of that funding goes back to the researcher, not coming out of their pocket all the time. So if you're re reducing that middleman, you can reduce the cost. So it's instead of 3,000, it's like 300 pounds. So again, the cost is greatly reduced. And if the cost is greatly reduced, you might be able to publish more compared to two years before. Because the same amount of funding you use to publish one paper, you can actually use to publish 10 papers. So potentially having institution-backed journals might be an interesting way to reduce the cost at least. Because you need to pay a, a department within the university to do it. But because it's not being outsourced, it's within university, it might be. 
YouTube. Another aspect is something known as crowdfunded reviewing. And this is quite a new concept. I don't know if many people know about it, but it is, it is a notion of many of us, you know, pay subscriptions for Netflix, Twitter, you know, Instagram and all sorts. We pay, you know, subscriptions for platforms where we stream movies on. But as a researcher, we could potentially pay a subscription where it's maybe $5, $10 a month. And that money, it goes towards the, the crowdfunding reviewing process where let's say you pay five, ten pounds and many people around the world do. That pool of money gets given to all the reviewers who are reviewing a lot of work. So there's a monetary gain. It might be something small, but it's some form of contribution that for a review paper, you get paid, you know, 20 or 30 dollars perhaps. And that's something at least, at least because it might take an hour or two hours. But at least there's some monetary gain some compensation in order for you to review the work. So that is a concept, again, these are just ideas. There'll be a lot of stuff that needs to happen. But it gives you an idea that, hmm, there is, if we all contribute like a monthly subscription to be a part of this club, where we give money, other people get money, and then we get money back potentially, it might be of value. Let me know in the comments if you think that's a good one. And number three is actually something that's happening right now. And it's the notion of moving stuff to a more open access point of view. Now, generally, as I mentioned earlier, you will pay to get the work out there and people then have to potentially pay to see it. Now, if something is made publicly available, there should be no second part of that thing. So there should be no cost involved for people to see your work. And this is why academic journals don't really want this to happen because they lose a lot of their revenue. Because if it's then actually publicly available, the cost to subscribe to that journal would be a lot less because so many of those journals and those papers are free to see. So again, academic journals use a lot of revenue if that model is in place. There's a lot of push and shove from government point of view and research councils and new university institutes, but it is something that's going to benefit researchers a lot more and unfortunately it doesn't benefit the academic journals. But should it really in the first place? Now this is one of a bit of a left field point of view. I don't fully understand it exactly, but I just want to share it out there and get your thoughts. Many of you might be more familiar with blockchain than I do. When I was doing some research, I came across this phenomenon where you could essentially decentralize this whole peer review process. Bit of a, you know, a bit of an odd one, but the notion is, is that you greatly reduce the cost because then not one platform, not one mafia holds all of it. It could be fully decentralized and the whole peer review process could be very transparent, but also very secure, which is the notion of this whole blockchain you see in the news of the past coming years. So that one was a bit of a left field one, but I just wanted to share to see what research I actually found on this particular topic and this whole decentralization of the peer review process via blockchain is something So the reason why you can probably tell I was so annoyed in making this video is that many researchers are very passionate about their field. They spend so much time, they put their blood, sweat and tears into try and get new knowledge, advance society, contribute to new findings, really help society, whether it's helping patients, whether it's helping businesses and companies, while well, it's helping the public sector in terms of transportation. And it's really annoying that they then have to have these massive red blocks, these obstacles in place, and they get exploited from these academic journals. And it's a real shame because it stifles a lot of people's research. Some don't actually can't even afford the APC in order to get their paper out there. So you can see why this needs to change in the next coming you know, couple of decades. And I hope in my lifetime I do see a big shift where you are more incentivized to put your papers out there, not just from a currency point of view in terms of, oh, I have more papers, but also from a financial point of view, from a career progression point of view, because it's a shame that some PhD students don't get to go down research a lot more because of this academic journal scam, this billion dollar scam that needs to change. And if you want to know more about this whole concept, I made a recent video about why I feel academia, which is kind of the prerequisite to this journal process, is broken, it's dead and buried. That video is over here and I urge you to check that out because you'll have a real understanding of why from the root cause there is so much that needs to change, not just academic journals. So I hope you find that video useful, it's over here and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care.